So Reagan Smith and Christoph Milak. <coughs> excuse me. You okay? <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Take <speaking> it away. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, buenos dias. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Buenas todas. That's uh, some Spanish. Bienvenido. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, very Come good. On, yeah, he in. speaks a little, too. We are honored to be connecting with all of you users and listeners and viewers. Uh, we are excited about what's coming up. Lindsey Vaughn, you know, probably, well, definitely the greatest female skier in the history of Alpine and likely among the top three skiers of all time based on her numbers, getting ready to join us uh, on the phone and talk about so many of the issues that are that are crucial to her, including obviously her new uh, HBO, uh, the final season, the yeah. story of, of her final run, which is uh, devastatingly mm -hmm. uh, powerful. Anyway, just by by way of uh, helping you understand what our day has been like, I came in freshly shaved. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's smooth. I did it myself. I don't yeah. pay. I don't. I don't pay. I don't pay for a shave. Yeah, I did. You did. I did. I yeah. went to a nice little barber last night. Got a fresh haircut. A little, he's a little barber. <laughs> fresh little haircut, you know, okay. and, 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 uh, and a neck shave. You can see it. It looks yeah. fresh. Yeah, it, no, it does. It hidden, looks... hidden, by, hidden by the turtleneck. Yeah, hidden by the turtleneck no, by, looks, by uh, design. It looks sharp. Yeah, but we're ready for this. This Are is you? cool. So you ready to go? The, you yeah. thought about doing more? Did you pee, full pita? I did go to the gym yesterday too. I, I was. No, but I mean, you talked about doing full pita, like shaving. You know, just going clean and coming it's out. And... A story for another day. Uh, okay. By the way, I I did think about getting the full Brazilian, but you know, just. Didn't right. feel, I didn't feel let's it. Move, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just giving you a quick idea. Uh, I'm old. Uh, I've been in the business for 30-something years. Uh, graduate degree, master's in broadcast journalism from Boston University. Love Boston. I uh, worked for CNN for many years. Uh, I, I love what I'm doing. It's a blast. The Olympic Channel has been awesome. Been here for three years and uh, so many other opportunities internationally to, to impact and do commentary and, uh, you know, screw up and, and have people correct me. Mm -hmm. You know, you're old. You've been in the industry I'm, longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Wow. Twice as old as you. But More it's experience. Twice. It comes down to experience. Yeah. Well, no, you know, I, I'm experienced. Yeah, no, I, as, as you know, and as uh, I'm just one of the many members of the social media uh, news editorial team, creating content on a daily, uh, weekly, monthly basis, um, and most importantly, uh, been here two and a half years, mm -hmm. and now I'm getting ready to uh, join you on this epic journey, this yes, cool new is. idea, yeah. um, excited about it, uh, learning from the master. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, this will right, right. be a, a, a fun thing to be a part of with you. Also, it's time now for us to dial back five, four, three, two, one on mm -hmm. the stories that were most gripping for us in 2019. And I'm I'm going to take a bath right now. I'm going to chill out a little bit in the pool. I'm a shower guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm a shower guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, at the World Championships, youth was served. Uh, maybe the next Katinka Hosu, who, as you may know, the Iron Lady from Hungary, uh, is uh, one of the most dominant swimmers of our lifetime. Uh, certainly her lifetime. She, There's no way she won't be defending her gold in Tokyo 2020. Golds, I should say. But how about 17-year-old Reagan Smith, youngest U.S. swimmer, <coughs> excuse me, crushes Missy Franklin's world record in the 200-meter backstroke at the World Championships in South Korea. She also set another world record in the relay. She's almost certainly going to make the U.S. swim team. 17 years old, uh, swim team in the 100- and 200-meter backstroke. And the Olympic trials coming up in June. She will be a face to watch. Yep. And then how about the next Michael Phelps? Maybe he hasn't been born yet. Maybe. Probably not, actually. But it's incredible how Hungarian, the Iron Lady's countryman, 19-year-old Krzysztof Milak, a star at the Youth Olympic Games in the summer in Buenos Aires, broke Phelps' world record in the 200-meter fly, a record that stood for 18 years, and Milak crushed it by almost a full second. So Reagan Smith and Krzysztof Milak... <coughs> excuse me. You okay? <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Take it away. <laughs> well, while, while you're recovering, um, yeah, but we were both in watching. We were watching those um, here when it we were covering it extensively on the channel. Um, <laughs> medical check. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with what happened recently at the Rugby World Cup. Um, quick to the point, Japan. They shined as host, they shined as fans, and they shined performance on, on the pitch. Um, they put on an unbelievable show. 
Um, and the team did not disappoint, upsetting Scotland and Ireland, going undefeated, unbeaten in the group before losing to the eventual winners in South Africa. Their performance was so impressive that there are now discussions on how Japan can be more involved in pre-existing tournaments around the world. Um, just with it coming to Tokyo, uh, showing Japan's enthusiasm, they can host they can host the event. Um, it's going to be uh, an incredible show on what they can do. Um, what they can do coming <laughs> it's up. It's called medical attention. I actually watched some of the rugby. I, I didn't understand a lot of it, but I'm getting better at it. <clears throat> we'll be good. Like your health now. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay, mine, Tiger wins the Masters. I don't know where. Yep. I mean, he was his career was done. He had lost. He was like 500th in the world. He, he was dealing with injuries. He obviously had the personal issues years before. Uh, there was no reason to think a year, year and a half, two years ago that he was ever going to win another tournament, much less a major. Comes back, wins the Masters, first major in 11 years, 15th overall. Now Jack Nicklaus' all-time major record of 18 is at least in sight. I mean, Tiger's in his early 40s. He could he could be chasing and that down if he if he wins a major a year. You know, that, it's not a problem. And uh, I think he's going to contend for another major this year. I just don't think he's as consistent. That's the thing. He's just he can't go out and dominate week to week or month to month. I don't think his body will will, will let him do that. But I think it, you know if you rule Tiger out from uh, breaking the Golden Bears record, I think you're crazy because he's proven time and time again, and now this time that uh, he can continue to come back. And he has that passion that so many of the older athletes that we admire throughout sport has and he, and he he loves the sport and he's willing to work and work and work so i i don't think we've heard the last of tiger at the majors yeah i think tiger woods saying he wants to go to tokyo is interesting i'm i'm looking forward to it that's actually not on my top five uh my number four is actually another recent thing that happened um more on the influencer side but it was uh ksi versus logan paul uh two influencers entering the boxing ring um to me this is interesting and I think it should be for everyone interested in media because it's all about the audience and two YouTubers creating such buzz around a sport that wasn't very popular on YouTube, um, getting their audiences together, which is collectively over 40 million people interested in a sport. Um, Crazy. For, from math perspectives, if 10% of their audience see, uh, is watching it, that's still 4 million new eyes on it. Uh, and, and I think seeing how this merge and fusion between uh, celebrities and uh, stars entering um, uh, certain sports, boxing in this case, um, is really something to watch out for um, moving forward. And, and moving forward, and this is case in point. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. And uh, my number three, as we advance, reigning Olympic champion in marathon, Ilyud Kipchoge runs a sub two hour marathon. It was an unbelievable event. Everybody tuned in. It was one of those events that you, you know you know where you were on this day, the first sub two hour marathon in history. Um, and, you know, he's, he's solidified his place as the greatest marathoner of all time. Uh, I'm just wondering when the young Kenyans or the youngers of, of any country will be able to break a two-hour marathon in a real marathon, not a, basically a flat course. Um, none of the, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything away from it. It was an incredible accomplishment, under two hours. But, you know, there's no, there's no stress of competition. There's no hills. There's, everybody was helping him run. There weren't, there weren't teams trying to hold him back and all that kind of stuff. But I'm wondering when, if, if you think in the next five or ten years, we will see someone else go under two hours in a real marathon. There's a chance. Do you know how fast he ran? What his average pace was? 20, no. 21 kilometers an hour yeah. for, for the time. Yeah. I'm not knocking it. Yeah, he had, I'm did just he saying. run up hills? I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. No, did he run up any hill? No, but I think it's did a little more. Did he have people holding him back like in a normal marathon? I, I think it's look, more impressive than it was. Think. An, it, no, anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not impressive. Fine. I'm I'm not, I know. No. I know. But let's go on because no. I, I just I think I think it's more I think it's more impressive than you think. I'm going to go to my number three. Okay. And I think w this is where we start seeing some disagreement. Okay. But I'm going to go to the USA's women's national soccer team in equal pay. Um, you know, it's their fourth consecutive title, uh, more than any other nation in history. Um, they aren't here, in my opinion, for their win. They've always won. What They're here for what they stood for, gender equality in sports. Um, that's it. I mean, it's enough said. That's my number three. Okay. Number two, Spain rolls through the FIBA World Cup unbeaten, wins gold, USA seventh. Uh, you know, they came into the tournament. Yeah, they're a top five team. You know, we had 
Sergio Scariola with us uh, back in August and the head coach of the Spanish national team. And he was, you know, kind of soft selling what they could do. But they went in there with Marcus Gasol and Ricky Rubio and some other veterans. They didn't lose a game. They didn't look great, but they won. They won every game. They won the gold medal. They pounded Argentina in the gold medal final. Uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, Marc Gasol, just the second player ever, joining Lamar Odom, who would have predicted to win an NBA title in the World Cup back in Lamar Odom's day. It was a world championship gold medal in the same year. Mark Gasol earlier joining his brother Pau as the first brothers to win NBA titles. So Spain has their big old paw prints all over world basketball. And uh, that, to me, they came, they didn't come out of nowhere, but rolling through unbeaten, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And the USA finishing seventh, which we'll get to. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I mean, again, not in my top five. I think it was a great story. It didn't make the cut. Number two, I'm going with arguably the greatest gymnast of all time, Simone Biles. Uh, statistically, t- the greatest, 27 overall total right. gold total gold medals across all competitions. Right. Um, I would put her in the same category as Michael Phelps, Usain Bolt, Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali. Okay. That would uh, not be out on any limb. No, uh, it's that's not. not. It's not, and that's why right. she's number two. Um, okay. and, and, that's and, 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 pretty you know, much she, Exactly. Okay. So, so, and um, you know, I, I think she has the, <laughs> um, and, and you know, it's a having, cutaway camera, by the way. But what, but what she, but what she did at the at the cha- world championships year, this year, um, continuing to the Biles two, second move named after her, um, and, and I think that we should all really appreciate what she's done for the sport. And she'll no be twenty three. She'll be twenty three when Tokyo rolls around, and I think we should all just be along for the ride, mm-hmm. um, witnessing greatness. Yeah. My number one, uh, again, the U.S. Women's National Team, he thought it was somewhere above that, but uh, I thought it was the most significant thing to me because for many reasons, fourth uh, World Cup to go along with four Olympic golds, Megan Rapinoe dominating, winning the Golden Boot, the Golden Ball Award, taking the U.S. president on on Twitter, also promoting LGBT rights. uh, The team also overcame intense criticism for arrogance. Remember, uh, Alex Morgan uh, scored big goals and had the little T-sip celebration. She said it was uh, just had more to do with, uh, you know, a, a, a statement about the lack of arrogance and blah, blah, blah. But they, they are the big thing that the national team was representing and continues to, uh, bringing its equal pay dispute with the U.S. Soccer Federation front and center, suing in March, saying the U.S. Soccer Federation's payment practices amount to federal discrimination by paying women less than men, quote, for substantially equal work and by denying at least equal playing, training, and travel conditions, etc. Just recently, the U.S. Women's National Team also won the right to sue in a class action. This is all legal stuff, but the bottom line is that because of Megan Rapino and uh, Alex Morgan and so many others, Carly Lloyd, I mean, the team was great, but they also took a stand. Again, fair play. Mm-hmm. They took a position, and they weren't afraid to defend it. They caught a lot of flack during the whole World Cup run because they were out there. And when you're number one, the bullseye's on your back. It wasn't pretty, but they won. Yep, they did. And, I mean, look, the argument is is there. Like, I mean, there's an, very few people would maybe disagree with you. I, I actually went with Elliot Kipchoge as my number one. Um, look, it's equivalent to, as the quote that was going around, it is equivalent to mankind landing on the moon. It is history. Yep. Um, the Kenyan is a three-time medalist, mm-hmm. gold, you know, three-time Olympic medalist. Um, defending gold medalist. Defending right? gold, yeah. gold medalist. Simply historic. Is he the greatest marathon ever? You know, we can open that up. Is but in the modern era, 100. percent I will end. I will end with this, and and this is kind of um, what I think is he records all of his workouts. Did you know? Uh, and a quote that I found that stood out is, uh, and what he said is, when you write, then you remember. Well, he wrote himself in the history books this past year, and for that reason alone, his sub two hour marathon is my number one moment of 2019. All right. Well, very good. And uh, you know, they're all we could interchange any of these. Exactly. But the fact is, I think those you know you you put those all together, and they were the most memorable moments of an incredible 2019, and so much more uh, to look forward to. And speaking of looking forward, Lindsey Vaughn getting ready to join us uh, in New York. She's calling in. We can't wait to talk to her. And to me, this speaks to who Lindsey Vaughn is more than. Her record, 82 World Cup wins, hundreds of medals, celebrity status. Her toughness and passion for her sport evident right here. Mm -hmm. Final training run for the Turin 2006 Winter Olympics downhill. Look at this. Thought she'd broken her back. This is in training the day before. Airlifted off the mountain by a helicopter. But Lindsey Vaughn was back on skis two days later, racing no broken bones or fractures, but in severe pain. Lindsey Vaughn managed to finish eighth, earning the coveted 
U.S. Olympic Spirit Award. It's a, something that anybody in the skiing world will never forget. Down and out and out and down and still managing, airlifted out, back. And, you know, we'll talk to her about that. Uh, just relentless courage, relentless passion for her sport. And again, the release of HBO's documentary, Lindsey Vonn, The Final Season. It's an intense behind-the-scenes look, an embedded story. They have unbelievable background video. Lindsey's uh, completely candid remarks, crying. I mean, you see the full life of what she was going through. Yeah. And uh, we were looking forward to uh, talking to her about that. Uh, ultimately an exhilarating final season on the Al Alpine World Cup Tour. And uh, Lindsay will be ready to explain it to us uh, really soon. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, tell us uh, the, the most important question right off the bat is where's Lucy? Because I know I, I want to know where my dog is from time <laughs> to time. So where, where is she? <laughs> Lucy is uh, sitting right next to me along with my other two dogs, Bear and Leo. It's a full house. <laughs> Very good. She won't interrupt us, right? I mean, she's good. She's good with all this. Oh yeah, no, she's uh, she just looked at me. She knows we're talking about her, and uh, she's yeah. she likes to uh, sit nice and pretty for the camera. So she's yeah. she's good. She'll she'll be well behaved. She looked great in the documentary. And by the way, let's let's talk about that right off the bat. Uh, <laughs> the HBO doc, uh, Lindsey Vaughn, the final season. Uh, it details your agony and ecstasy. I mean, I was blown away. I watched it twice. Um, struck by your incredible, obviously incredible commitment to your sport, um, the lifelong passion, pain tolerance, willpower. Uh, as you look back on that, what are you most proud of? Um, you know, there's, a, I think there's a lot to be proud of. I think, you know, it's not, it's not really about the record so much as, you know, my, how hard I worked to get to where I, I got and, you know, my, my family sacrifices and, you know, uh, I mean, there was a lot of people that worked very hard to get me to where I am. And I'm proud of all the work that we put in. And, and um, you know, I think the biggest thing is always giving 100%. You know, I never look back and think that I could have done more or I could have worked harder. I always worked as hard as possible and I have no regrets. So, I mean, I, I wish I could have broken the, the World Cup win record, but I still don't regret doing everything that I did because it led me to where I am now. Uh, you are one of the toughest athletes in any sport anywhere, and, and I know that's part of who you are. Yeah, it is. I mean, as you know, anyone that has surgery, you know, it's not an easy process, no matter how big or how small. And, and um, it's just, you know, my mentality is to never give up, never quit, you know, always keep believing in yourself. And, um, you know, it definitely wasn't an easy road, but in the end, I always pick myself back up and, and that's one of the things I'm most proud of in my career. Yeah, Lindsay, Sam here, and you know, like Tom said, really, it's an honor to ha to have you on here. Um, you know, as you're entering a Thank new stage, as you're uh, as you're entering a new stage in your in your career, has the HBO doc helped with closure moving forward? Yeah, it did. Oddly, you know, I didn't really expect it, but when we had the premiere, when it was done, I kind of felt a sense of relief. You know, a sense of of closure and finality in everything you know i i was able to look back and be proud of what i had accomplished and the fact that so many people had come out to support me and and were interested in my story really made me feel like you know what i did on the mountain will you know be remembered and that's something that you know you don't always get and i i wasn't necessarily you know expecting uh to be honest but it really made me feel good, and like I can close that chapter officially and and move forward. Yeah, girl, you're only 35. I'm <laughs> I'm like uh, almost twice your age, and I wish I had those years back. So, and I know you'll enjoy it. You're you're set up to do incredible things. But I want to know about competition adrenaline. You addressed it in the in the in the doc. It, it, that's the one thing athletes across the board. You know, I wonder about how Tom Brady will replace that adrenaline. And there's so many other guys who are near to Federer, another guy, a friend of yours, how you guys will replace that, the build up, the workout, the adrenaline of competition. That's something that goes away and there's almost nothing left in life to, to replace that. You, that's a, it's a, a battle for you to replace that. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. I definitely am. You know, it's, life is a lot different without uh, going 80 miles an hour down the mountain. I don't have that adrenaline at all. And um, I'm, 
I'm trying not to get speeding tickets um, when I'm driving. <laughs> um, but I don't Does that mean you've had a couple? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, man. I mean, my, my my idea was to go skydiving, but PK was definitely not having that. He was yeah, not yeah. excited about that idea. No, I understand that. Um, so, yeah, so I definitely have to find something. And I think, you know, my public speaking actually has been something that I enjoy. And it doesn't replace it, but it gets me excited. And, you know, you're on the spot. You're talking in front of thousands of people. and. Yeah. And that pressure definitely is something, you know, it's not seeing, but it's something. And also I'm just kind of throwing myself into work. And I think that uh, it kind of takes takes that space away in my mind. So I'm not thinking about it as much. Mm-hmm. Well, Lindsay, not to not to make fun of Tom here, but you 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 and I have something in common, and we're both millennials, um, and you've been very open. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Never heard that line before. That's a good one. I'm a Rangers fan, so we'll get to that later. Uh, but you know. Oh boy! Oh, here we go. <laughs> But uh, you, you know, you, you tap on your you tap on your public speaking, and um, you know you are a millennial who has dealt with depression and very open about it, um, and also someone that is very aware of false perceptions that social media um, brings in. Um, so I guess just uh, kind of switching off the the slopes per se, um, what would you say to the young girls out there who struggle with self esteem issues because they don't look like everyone else, or because or the way society wants them to look? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think it's a it's a huge problem right now in our society. And um, I think social media, unfortunately, is uh, the cause of that. You know, kids often think that what's on social media is real life. And that's absolutely not true. You know, Instagram is not reality. And uh, everyone is special in their own way. You have to believe in yourself. You know, we're not all meant to look the same. We're not all beautiful you know we it's about what's inside that matters it's about, it's about how you carry yourself your confidence and and that's what makes the biggest difference and i know it's it's very hard to to be confident in yourself a lot of the time i have felt the same way off the slopes but um it's a process and you you'll if you keep working at it just like anything else uh, you'll eventually get to a, a good place and um, you know, I go to therapy all the time. It's really important to take care of yourself. You know, it's not just about, you know, taking care of yourself physically. It's, it's your mental, uh, health as well. It's, it's so, so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well said. And that leads into my question, just how important it is that, uh, young athletes, particularly what young women and girls see you talk openly about depression, because, you know, you're a role model on the Hill, but also in how you live your life. And, and I think it's an incredible inspiration for people who, who may need help to see you saying, I need help sometimes and I go get it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just important to be open and honest. You know, I felt really ashamed for a long time and I never told anyone. I never even told my family. And I wish I had, you know, I would have learned a lot more about my family. My mom struggles with it as well. And and, um, you know, it's, 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 there's nothing wrong with you, you know, it's, it's normal and we just need to talk about it and you need to, you need to have the support. Otherwise, you know, we can't, we can't do it alone. No one can do it alone. Everyone needs help and, and there's no shame in asking for it. So I think just talking about it opens the door to a lot of people, um, who may have felt the same that I, as, as I did and why I didn't tell my family. Um, and hopefully that gives them confidence to, to go out and, and talk to people and get the help that they need. Have you noticed in some of your, I know you've done symposiums on mental health, and have you noticed connections you make with some young people where you, you really see the difference? Because uh, sometimes when I've helped others, it, it has an unbelievable way of giving back to me, and, and that's not the intention. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, I think for me, just coming out and talking about it was, um, something that I needed to do to move forward, but the positives that have come out of it are unbelievable. You know, I've, I've had so many kids and, and adults come up to me and say that it's helped them to talk about it and to seek help. And, um, you know, they agree that, you know, it's not everything that, that, you know, p- there's a lot of perceptions that people 
think that, you know, I have a perfect life and everything's great, but it's really, you know, not how it always appears. You know, you come home to a hotel room and you're by yourself and it's lonely and depressing. And, and, um, a lot of times people don't, don't see that. So I've, I've really, I've really been surprised and, and made me feel really good about, about speaking about it because people have had such uh, a positive response to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you touched on that in your doc, you know, the the coming to a hotel room alone and, and all of that, and um, it's very real. Um, another thing very real that I, I think that you might be able to give your insight on is global warming is obviously a major issue, um, directly affecting winter sports mm-hmm. seasons and the Olympics. Um, just from what have, what have you seen um, and kind of what do you think needs to be done to unite everybody on this crucial issue? Well, I've seen a number of things, you know, the biggest, the biggest of them is the glaciers, you know, the glaciers are all melting at an incredible rate. Um, when I, when I went to Europe for the first time, when I was nine, uh, skied in Austria, it looks absolutely nothing like it does today. It's almost all rock and uh, all of the glacier that used to come all the way down the mountain to the hotel, thousands of feet is, is gone. Um, and you know, being in a winter sport, we, we rely on winter, we rely on snow and the seasons are erratic. Uh, snow is never consistent. Um, it's either uh, hot too early or hot too late. Um, you know, it's the weather patterns are nothing like they used to be. Um, so, I mean, I, I, of course, you know, try to do what I can, um, as should everyone, but you know, uh, we're at a we're at a uh, significant impasse, and we think, you know, we need to have everyone on board to make significant changes. Uh, let's talk quickly about the Olympics. Uh, you know, for your sport, uh, the downhill and the Super G, one day, one run. The World Cup, you know, you're going to go to the next stop, but the Olympics is unique, and you're, you know, you've talked about the Olympic gold uh, being your most prized possession among many. Uh, how does that feel like you go from the tour to one day, one run, for gold, it's kind of fluky sometimes, but th- that's a different kind of pressure, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the Olympics are definitely a lot different than any World Cup. You know, there's only one chance, as you said, and, and you know, you've worked your whole life for that moment, and there could be a gust of wind or the, a cloud could come and you have no light, and, um, you know, right. anything can happen. And it's in a lot of ways, it's there's a lot of luck that goes involved that's involved with it in skiing because it is an outdoor sport and and literally anything can happen. But, um, the pressure that I felt at the 2010 Olympics was, was crazy. You know, I, I had never experienced anything like it before. And, um, you know, the fact that I was able to get that Olympic gold was one of the most, uh, special moments in my career, not just for myself, but especially for my family. You know, we all worked so hard, um, to get to that point and it was very very validating so but yeah. it's, it's definitely the olympics are, are definitely much much different than the, the world cup there's no there's no second chance it's only right uh, two minutes to prove yourself yeah i remember seeing you you know your tears with at the metal uh, plaza were, were amazing uh we're wrapping it up it's time for some rapid fire this and that and why okay so let's start with lake louise okay. or garmish uh, Lake Louise. Um, I've, I mean, I've won in both places and yeah. I love Garmin, but, uh, <laughs> I think I've won a lot, a lot more in Lake Louise. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I, uh, I love Lake Louise. It's just, it's an amazing place. All right. Next up we have Twitter or Instagram. Instagram. I'm not really, I mean, I do do Twitter, but I don't know. Instagram's more my style. Yeah. Pictures and all that, right? You can get a real taste of what you're up to. Uh, hockey. Yeah. Hockey or yeah. skiing? Hockey or skiing? I got you now. Oh, that's an impossible question. Right? Yeah, nice job, guys. Oh, that's, Go ahead. That's a low blow. Um, Go Rangers. I, yeah, uh, you know exactly what the answer. I'm gonna have to say hockey. Yeah, you better. Um, you better. So. <laughs> So now I'm supporting PK. Yeah. I love the fact that you yeah. both are gold medal winners. That's a whole other yeah. part of the story that's amazing. Got it. Got yeah, it. totally. 100%. Okay. Well, uh, this has been a treat for us. Uh, best of luck yeah. on the run of the HBO uh, documentary, Lindsey Vaughn, The Final Run. Uh, it was it was riveting, and I, I applaud you for being so honest in that. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. And uh, remember us, Olympic Channel, we're following you wherever you go in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsey. 
let's not forget she's a Lausanne 2020 Youth Olympics um, ambassador. Yep. So all of those uh, athletes yeah. will, will be looking up to her as well. Yeah. Um, good so. point. And as a matter of fact, it's her that's a very good segue because it's the third time she will be um, a, uh, a Youth Olympics ambassador coming up in Lausanne 2020. And uh, that pivots right into where, as we look forward, because mm-hmm. we've had a great time looking back and then, you know, Lindsay joined us and that was a blast. But uh, looking forward, it's right around the corner, coming up January 9th. I get a chance to do opening ceremonies That's exciting. and hockey. I get to do yeah. all of the uh, Lausanne 2020 uh, Youth Olympic Games hockey with uh, with my partner coming up. And uh, these are 14 to 18 year olds, the best and the brightest in the world competing in eight winter sports. Biathlon, bobsleigh. Bob Slay, you see? It's Bob not Slay. sled. I know, I know. I okay. learned this the other day, writing a copy. I, I learned okay. this the hard way. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's, so you're learning something. Uh, yeah, you're young few, and you can, you you can still learn. <laughs> <laughs> Curling, <laughs> hockey, luge, skating, skiing, ski mountaineering, 16 disciplines, 81 total medals. Um, and it'll be, you know, it, these are the kind of things that, that uh, Lindsay came another path, but there are people who will choose this path. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, this is just the time to see the future. The, uh, these up and coming athletes, um, ready to uh, take on take on the world, show the world what they have. This is what the third. This is the third youth Olympic, the third winter youth Olympics. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's gaining popularity, and it's, and by the way, it's on the Olympic Channel coming up January 9th, Wall to wall coverage, all kinds. Uh, we will have live streams. We'll have a you know news crews there. We will we will be the coverage. go-to place. Yeah, yeah extensive Looking coverage. And you'll be doing a lot on social. Yeah, we, we will. We'll be covering. But it's just another exciting thing to see the future, um, in the in these thrilling in these thrilling sports. So as you look ahead, uh, what what are you looking forward to? Well. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, one of my one of my things. I think we're counting. We're going back down, right? So you, one, can, one, you can go in any direction. Any, any door, you want. Door Just don't leave. Okay. The door is closed. I'm, leaving. I'm walking something. out right now. <laughs> no, I think one that of the does one it. <laughs> I got my stress, my Olympic channel <laughs> stress ball. I'm stressing out. <laughs> no, but it, what rounds out my list is um, mm-hmm. I have kind of this interesting rivalry going on in ba- in women's badminton. You have Carolina Marine of Spain and PV Sundu of. India, um, it's kind of. I didn't. I didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming. No, it, no it, but, that's that's good. No, it, but it's it's something you know. Badminton India, it's um, a, a really fast, a really large following. Sure. Um, also, the world's fastest racket sport, four hundred kilometers an hour. The uh, the the, the, the shuttlecock. shuttlecock. Is hit. Um, so this, this rivalry is interesting. Sindhu is uh, the, the most recent world champion, um, but she's never. But she won it without Carolina Marine. The rivalry kind of started around uh, Rio, and then it's going to kind of um, come to a full-on collision in Tokyo. Um, Marine coming off an injury. Yeah, she tore her ACL, which yeah. is how uh, Sindhu won. Right. But um, you know, Marine's a three-time world champion. Sindhu won. And uh, their rivalry coming to a full head will kind of determine uh, if Marine is the clear right. uh, gold medalist winner of the best or if Sindhu kind of can, can win it. Um, you know, will, will this rivalry extend a little bit while I, I love that. I love rivalries. We can maybe do a whole show yeah. on that sometime in the future because they really, first of all, they push the other to be better. Yeah, it's a friendly rivalry too. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not a hated one. So it, no. it's a very respectable one. But, it, but, it, but it, it draws people to it because it's not just some one person dominating. Right. Now, I don't mind domination because I'm a Patriots fan. Yeah, well, TV 12s right here. Yeah. Can't see them, but um, I, I just think rivalries really bring new people to the table, and it also, as I said, it it, it makes each athlete work harder because mm-hmm. they have a they have a target on their back by that other person. Right, and uh, and that's uh, that's fun. And speaking of uh, rivals, you know, there's Rafa Nadal, yep. uh, number one in the world. Novak Djokovic and then Roger Federer, you you know, you mix them and match them. I happen to think Federer is the, the greatest of all time, but you know, you could make an argument for either one of those three. The question I have coming going forward is, is this the end for Federer? Is this the last year? I don't mean the end. He just said, it's amazing. He just said, I feel great. Yeah. I don't know why I'd retire, which nobody wants to see him retire. There's no reason at all. But you know, he's going through he'll go he'll go Australia, French, he's committed, Wimbledon, he was had two match points, sh- should have beaten Djokovic, but he lost. And then going forward is is Tokyo. Uh, that's the one single. That's the one thing he doesn't have a singles gold medal. So let's see, and also who the next tenant, who the next wave of tennis stars is. We've been waiting. I'm more interested as well on the women's side. The passing of the guard really seems to be um, to have arrived. Yeah. Um, and you know, you have obviously the Williams sisters. You know, they're not the passing of the guard, but they're the legends that are still around. Um, and then you have Osaka. You have Coco Golf. 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 Coco Golf. Yeah. And you have well uh, U.S. Open champion. 
Bianca Adrisco. Yeah, and Ash Barty. And Ash right Barty there as well. And so these and are all. Don't pe- forget Simona Halep. I mean, yep, yeah, exactly. it, It's definitely they They've. I think they've chased down Serena, and yep. of course, she's won everything there is to win. Yep. And, you know, and, and so, she's getting older as well. It's so just, that's it's something. The, it's the natural process. Yeah. So I, I think I think you and I agree on the tennis, um, and it's something that'll be really interesting to see how it plays out moving forward. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's one of mine, and this will maybe catch you by surprise, uh, boxing. We haven't really talked much about boxing. Right. Um, I've never boxed. I've got in the ring with my kids once in a while and spar, and then, you know, they're supposed to just t- spar, but they like to, to catch dad. You know, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll hit me. Them. Yeah, and they, they love doing that. But uh, obviously boxing is among the most popular sports at any, at any Olympics. Uh, but now, due to many irregularities in the amateur boxing world in recent years, including Rio 2016, I mean, let's be honest, boxing's qualifying process for Tokyo 2020 is now sanctioned by the International Olympic Committee, the IOC. And all of the Olympic boxing qualifiers, there are five of them around the globe coming up starting in February, will be produced by our friends upstairs here in Madrid at Olympic Broadcast Services, OBS, and it'll be streamlined uh, live right here on the Olympic Channel. Yep. So it's a whole new system, and we're going to be heavily involved watching, and it will put us all front and center as far as watching the new wave and seeing who will be positioning themselves for the podium in Tokyo. I'm going to go with what to look forward to is how USA basketball responds. Yeah. We told you we would get back to that seventh yeah. place finish at the World Cup. Um, I, I mean, they were the favorites. We both picked them. We both thought based on, you know, you roll out the ball, frankly, and if you're USA, you find a way to win. Serbia was good, but, you know, Spain wins it. But they didn't go with their best. I mean, and that's, that's what happens this day and age. If you don't take your best, you might not win it. Yeah, I mean, look, Steph Curry will be coming off the injury. He hasn't. Taken, he hasn't retracted his confirmation. Damian Lillard has has has, has confirmed. Um, you know, I, I think that this team is gonna this team is gonna look completely different. I do feel um, LeBron makes an appearance in his of final goal round. Um, yeah, I, I think so, it's a no brainer so, for all of them. You know, I, I think there, there are a few people. Unless there's an injury, I don't know who wouldn't want to go. Yeah, and so you know, this team is gonna look different. This team is gonna come out for revenge. Um, interesting fact is if LeBron wins the NBA NBA finals, which is a big if we got a lot of time for this. Yeah and and the Tokyo but they're he would better become, than I thought. He would become, better than I thought. He would become the first ever person to win a gold and uh, and an NBA championship in the same year twice. So I think there's That's a lot crazy. people look at legacies and People look at this stuff, um, yeah. and I think a lot of these players are looking at this as a legacy-defining moment, yeah. and I think the NBA is going to come out with revenge, um, and I think to see how that shapes out will be fascinating. Okay, we've reached the part of the show where... Uh, you What's know, your number one? What's your number one moment it, for 2020? No, I already... I, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, that part. Yeah, oh, that yeah. part. <laughs> Hello. I don't know. There's an Olympics coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tokyo 2020 on so many levels. That's incredible. Yeah. Every and years. personally... I have a connection to three by three basketball. I, mm-hmm. I love the way it's designed. Uh, it's not a new sport, but it's it's a new discipline, and it's going to be. Uh, I think the world that if they don't know it, it's you know it's like uh, it's you know 10, 10 minute game, twelve minute shot, twelve second shot clock. It's cra- crazy physical, and I think it's going to be one of the uh, the new sports that captures everybody's imagination. I think it'll be a, it's a controlled environment. Uh, I think it'll be a crazy venue too. Yeah, I mean it's we're, we just got to stay tuned. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be the event. It's it, it is the event, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think we're excited about it now, and people are going to become excited about it as it inches closer, and it'll be here fast. It'll okay. Be here last fast. thought. What'd you learn? Today, it's a basic thing I ask the kids when I coach them. You know, what'd you learn from this experience? That your coughing is a serious health concern moving forward. Yeah, well, these things happen. Did you yeah. like the way I bounced back, though? You're dealt with adversity, and yeah. you roll you roll back. You just you just keep going. Yeah, I might need. we might need to get a doctor, though, at some point. No, Give you fine, a though. It's just I got something caught in my throat. These things happen. You know, it's not the first time. You know? <laughs> well, if it's the last, we have a major issue. <laughs> there you go. There's a red card for that. Picking yeah, on you. You're, you're, no, it was fair game. Fair, fair game. game, not fair play, but fair game. Fair game. Yeah, uh, but it's been a blast. It has. Uh, that's Sam. I'm Tom. We will uh, be talking to you at some point down the road. Hope you enjoyed what we brought you.